Chapter 24 The Worst Kind of Abnormalities Marno POV Those fucker! What the fuck is the guild thinking? I spat out in frustration after I heard about the general outline of Ross Sand's labyrinth band from Salaams. I knew there was a feud between the guild, who wanted to increase the number of exclusive adventurers, and Rost San, who turned the offer down and became the guild agent's party member. For a guild that was making light of its adventurers, it must felt aggravating for a single adventurer to defy them. Those people in the guild don't even know what they're supposed to do and are supposed to not do. Even considering that feud, this is clearly not the right thing to do. As far as I can tell, that was obviously the fault of those people from War God's Greatsword who picked a fight with Rost San. It's not just the Adventurer Guild, it's just a common sense that even adventurers like us agree. And yet, the guild that supposedly prioritizes in protecting this common sense instead ignored this. That's something that must never be pardoned. Pushed with that thought, I opened my mouth. Hey guys, get ready! We're going protest to the guild. All right. Don't forget to go fetch your armor first. Boo-hoo. Gazu was the first one who answered my words. Following him, the other adventurers raised a shout and ran to the warehouse where they stored their armor. I could feel their eagerness from their reaction. I smiled from their reliability. If there are this many adventurers taking arms and barged into the guild, even the guild would have no choice but to lift Ross Sand's labyrinth ban. I can pay him back a little with this. I muttered what I thought out loud. I finally can return Ross Sand kindness, was the thought I had in my mind. Will the guild actually take the brunt of our protest? Hum? That thought disappeared from the words Salam said. His sudden words made me wonder for a bit that maybe he was scared. But his serious expression denied that thought. Hey, do you remember? When we thought we would be killed by Rostsan in the labyrinth. Um, yeah? Despite still confused, I nodded at the words Salam said with a serious tone. Currently, I knew that was impossible, but when we were prostrating in front of Rostsan, we seriously believed that Rostsan would kill us. While recalling that time, I opened my mouth. Now that you mention it, at that time, we were warned by the guild staffs that Rostsan was likely to murder us in the labyrinth. Right, the cause of our belief at that time was the information from the guild staffs. After tracing my memories, I remembered that and muttered it. In hindsight, the warning they repeatedly said to us back then was probably the reason we feared Rostsan. I saw it. Just like when they convinced us that Rostsan was the culprit, they fueled the animosity of War God's greatsword against Rostsan. What? It was when I recalled that that Salams revealed a shocking revelation to us. I was dumbfounded, I couldn't understand the guild's intention, pitting high-ranking adventurers which should be their most important assets against each other like that. Other adventurers couldn't hide their agitation from Salam's words either. However, unaware of our reaction, he continued. Now that I think about it, I can't help but feel the guild is trying to make us have a bad impression about Rostsan. Maybe, the guild is trying to isolate Rostsan in this labyrinth city. When I heard that, that's impossible was what immediately came to my mind. But I never put that thought into words. Looking back again, I realized the guild staffs had an attitude that supported Salam's claim. One of the guild staffs, the one that was called Handsome, didn't even try to hide his hostility to Rostsan when he told us about how Rostsan was the adventurer's murderer. He also told the story in a way that would incite our hatred against Rostsan. If we hadn't seen Rostsan defeating the mutated Hydra, we, no doubt, would be holding a grudge against Rostsan too. That was definitely an attempt to turn us against Rostsan. Why are they so hostile to Rostsan? Despite understanding all that, no, precisely because I understood all that I couldn't hide my confusion. Isolating Rostsan would only make it more likely that Rostsan would leave the Labyrinth City. However, it would only be a loss for Labyrinth City's guild if someone on Rostsan's caliber left the Labyrinth City. 
In other words, the guild should have another reason for wanting to isolate Rostsan, something I couldn't understand as I tilted my head. And Lionel. And look at that. But, I couldn't continue thinking about it anymore. My line of thought interrupted by Gaza's sudden scream as he pointed at the small window in the warehouse. Hum? Something that makes a courageous warrior like Gaza screams like that? As I wondered about that, I raised my face and looked toward the window. Everyone, kill. Hum. It was at that time I noticed a group of armed hobgoblins walking through the city. No way, right. A group of monsters that should only exist in the labyrinth. With that in front of me, I couldn't hide how panicked I was. The chill that ran down my spine made me realize that there was something unusual going on that I couldn't even begin to fathom. Why are there goblins here? It was the voice from the town folks outside the warehouse that let me knew this was not the time to be stunned. The one already in armor, quick, get out! By time for us to get ready! The moment I realized the town folks could be attacked by the hobgoblins, I raised my voice. Hearing my order, the other adventurers returned to their senses. Oh! We'll get rid of them hobgoblins! The next moment, the adventurers that entered the warehouse first and already wore their armor raised their battle cry and ran to the entrance of the warehouse. Please do! After seeing them off, I said that to their back and sped up my hand to put on my armor. If they just need to fight, they shouldn't have any problem. No matter how many hobgoblins there are. They're not an opponent for us, adventurers that capture the middle layer of the labyrinth. But this time, our objective is not only just annihilating the hobgoblins. We have to protect the town folks. The people who are just civilians and not adventurers. Shit! Why is this happening? Thinking about it again, I spat that out in annoyance. Being in Labyrinth City, the populaces are more accustomed to the emergency than one might think. If it's just a monster, we can deal with it with only our power. However, although our current opponents are not one that came out from the lower layer, there are still plenty of them. With such a small number of adventurers, there is a possibility that something happens to the town folks. Caw. The idea caused me to feel impatient, I dropped the arm part of my armor. At times like this, I hurriedly tried to pick up my armor while holding off the urge to scream. Kaya aia. Boy, there is no way right. There is still time. Quick, call a healer. It was then I could hear the screams and cries of my comrade from outside the warehouse. The moment I heard that voice, I stopped picking up my armor and ran toward the warehouse door. The worst possibilities flashed in my mind. Namely, it may have been too late for the town folks. Huh? And yet, the reality was far beyond my imagination. The hack. Opening the door, I jumped out from the warehouse only to be greeted by the sight of my seriously injured comrade, dying as he vomited blood, while the other adventurers had their hands full fighting the hobgoblins they couldn't approach him. I couldn't accept that scene for a moment. The hobgoblins were, to us, only small fries. That was the common sense of us, middle-layer adventurers. Then, why are my comrades struggling so much against hobgoblins? Some hiding still, adventurers. Huh. It was a hobgoblin who answered that question. The hobgoblin ignored the dying adventurers and told me so. As if it was trying to say it found a new toy. It was then that I realized that the monsters that showed up in the city weren't simple hobgoblins. You. All of you, what the fuck are you? I was screaming in front of that hobgoblin that exuding pressure that felt more like middle layer monsters instead. The hobgoblin in front of me laughed without answering my question. The cruel glint in its eyes made it felt like the monsters had intelligence that they shouldn't have. Human, all, annihilate. That was when we realized this situation was worse than we expected. 
Chapter 25 Town Adventurers vs. Hobgoblins Marnel POV The great sword the hobgoblin used approaching right before me. Ka. To avoid that and preparing for the large gap I would expose after that, I threw myself to the side and rolled on the ground. After a beat, I could hear the sound of the greatsword hitting the ground from a distance, it was when I understood I managed to survive. Surely by the time that hobgoblin with the greatsword came after me, I would have finished rebuilding my posture. Come to get killed? No way another one at this timing. But the relief I had at that time disappeared with what came to my sight the moment I raised my head. Standing in front of me, who was still in a bad posture, was a hobgoblin with an axe. Yes, I was so absorbed in running away from the hobgoblin with the greatsword that I rolled right next to another hobgoblin. Shit! Realizing that, I tried to get up immediately, but it was clear I wouldn't make it in time. The hobgoblin was laughing as if ridiculing me and raised its axe overhead. G.I.E. Dash! Are you okay, Marnel? It was then, Gazu, who had come back to the battle unnoticed, interrupted. His sudden interruption caused a moment of confusion for the hobgoblin. And Gaza didn't miss that opportunity. Oraya! The next moment, Gaza's sword smashed the neck of the hobgoblin with an axe and sent its head flying. Seeing that, I finally understood my life wasn't in peril anymore. However, I realized I couldn't afford to take my time here. Ignoring my body that was screaming from my unreasonable movement, I stood up, turned around, and readied my greatsword. Then, as I imagined, there was a figure of the hobgoblin with a greatsword chasing after me. Moreover, it pointed its greatsword at Gazu which was full of gaps after swinging his greatsword. Your opponent is me. I swung my greatsword at that hobgoblin. Just before my greatsword reached its torso, the hobgoblin noticed my attack, though, it was too late. Gig 3 Equipped with a greatsword that was known to have low maneuverability, the hobgoblin was unable to defend itself, my greatsword sunk into the middle of the hobgoblin torso. Gee, human, must kill. Even in such a state, the hobgoblin was still alive. Just before its last breath, it tried to reach for my face with its hand, but before it could, Gaza's greatsword ran through its head. You saved me. Likewise. So it reached him on this battlefield, I said my short thanks to Gaza loudly. To be honest, this was a situation where I should be thanking him as he helped me, but now, I couldn't spare that much time on that. More importantly, the townsfolks. I told several adventurers, including Gazu, to leave the battlefield to help evacuating the townsfolks. In other words, Gazu returning to the battlefield meant whatever the situation, it had been settled. I asked Gazu for the report. About that, I gave up. Now they're at the back with the injured. What he told me was bad news. Hearing that, I silently bit my lips. The possibility of not being able to evacuate the townsfolks isn't an unimaginable situation. After all, given the hustle and bustle of the surroundings, it seems this is not the only place where this is happening. Moreover, we also have violent adventurers in this city. In the current situation where we don't know what's happening, it's no wonder Gazu and the others decided it's better to let them stay here than to entrust these townfolks to others. Concluding that, I decided to stop holding Gaza back. All right, now go. Yeah, I leave it to you. Just remember what the hobgoblin from before do when you fight them. I know. I know I need to fight them seriously if I don't want to be killed. After Gaza heard my words, he said nothing more and ran to the front line. Looking at his back, I showed a hint of relief on my face as I thought, as long as Gazu on the front line, there won't be an immediate danger to the townsfolks at least. However, that relief was soon drowned by anxiety. This safety is not something we can depend on, that I know. Seeing my comrades still fighting fiercely against the hobgoblins strengthened that belief. The hobgoblins we were fighting currently boasting strength on the level of abnormality. 
In addition to its evident intelligence, they probably were stronger than orcs from middle layer, while being more numerous. Against hobgoblins like that, it was only a matter of time before we lost. With the return of Gazu who was trying to evacuate the town folks, the situation became better to some extent. The proof was now I could afford to look around. Still, it was clear the situation would gradually worsen at this rate. If only their number hadn't been reduced so much in the beginning. In the beginning, because they challenged the hobgoblins without knowing their true strength, many of my comrades were severely injured and incapacitated. If only that didn't happen, I couldn't shake off that idea while I was in battle, and I bit my lip hard. If we are all here, the situation would be better, that was the belief I had. That wasn't the only regret I had. No, at least, if I have my armor. I only wore my normal clothes now, I stared at my hand as I said so. Right, I wasn't completely armored even now. The reason for that was because I had to give some instructions to my comrades first. Because of that, I couldn't go to the front line to act as a tank. In the end, I was only useful for stopping the hobgoblins that slipped through my comrades like the one from earlier. I could have managed to get rid of this stalemate if I at least wear my armor, I thought as I glared hatefully at the hobgoblins. Wait a minute. It was then that I noticed something strange. The battlefield was still in a stalemate. Seeing that, I opened my mouth in blank amazement. Why hasn't the situation changed from earlier? Yes, the battlefield I currently observed hasn't changed. Even though quite a few adventurers, including Gazu, had come back. It's as if someone is in control and they made the battlefield to be in a stalemate. Hey! Something is weird. When I noticed that, I opened my mouth to tell my comrades about it. But it was too late at that time. Aim for the back. More human there. What dash? It was uttered by a hobgoblin in the back. I raised my voice involuntarily, and at the same time, I finally understood the hobgoblin's objective. The injured and the town folks were hiding in the building behind us. The hobgoblins keeping the battlefield in a stalemate to buy time so they could rummage around. All to kill more humans. Absolutely don't let them pass. The moment I noticed that I ran to the hobgoblins while shouting loudly. This wasn't the time to say it's too dangerous because I have no armor. No matter what, we must stop the hobgoblins. My comrades too, perhaps also noticing that the injured and the town folks were being targeted, launched an attack on the hobgoblins. But the thoughts of my comrades didn't connect. The hobgoblins had begun to move toward the building in the back with unprecedented momentum. The attack of the adventurers, including me, killed some of the hobgoblins, but that was all. Shit! Their momentum couldn't be stopped at all, the hobgoblins ignored us and kept going to the building in the back as it was. Imagining the scene of the townfolks getting slaughtered, I grimaced. The only adventurers in that building were the injured and the healers who were hardly capable of fighting. In other words, the moment the hobgoblins setting their foot in that building, it was certain many would be sacrificed. Even if we could eventually annihilate the hobgoblins, if that building would become a battlefield, many injured people and the town folks would die by then. Even though I knew that, there was nothing I could do anymore. The hobgoblins were approaching the building, they were out of my reach. What went through my head was the image of the boy who was holding a sword before in the morning. That boy was my first disciple. But I couldn't save that boy even if it was only him. Hum. Despair covered my face once I realized that, it was then it appeared with a roaring sound. Huh? Something that landed on the ground crushed the hobgoblins that were leading their charge to the building. For a moment, I didn't realize it was a person. Barely in time, huh? I only realized the moment that person said so. Hearing that familiar voice and confirming the identity of that person left me stood dumbfounded. To me, that person, Rostsan, opened his mouth with a serious expression different from his usual demeanor. Thank you, everyone.
I will take care of the rest. At that moment, I realized that we were saved.